Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to work on the song Amazing Grace. This will be the first lesson where you won't have to read my handwriting and my written in notes. I am using a version that I found on flutetunes.com. Flutetunes.com is an amazing resource. They have thousands of flute solos and other things posted on their website. And they also, on many of the solos, they have an MP3 recording or an MP4 that you can click on so you can not only see the music but also hear what it sounds like. So I would strongly recommend you checking out their website. Again, it's called flutetunes.com. Now you'll notice I'm holding two flutes today. And I just realized I never really told you about my, my first flute, my best flute. My head joint is a different color. You've probably noticed that this part is actually nine karat gold. And I got this when I was a full-time symphony musician and I was ready to buy a flute that really improved my tone and enabled me to project my tone beautifully to the back of the concert hall. I tried many different kinds of gold head joints. Remember, the, this head joint is gold, the, reg, the flute is still just silver. Um, and this is the one I settled on. It's actually nine karat on the head joint, but the lip plate is still just silver. This was the one that I personally sounded the best on. Fortunately, was not the most expensive one that I tried. So it just goes to show that everybody sounds different on different kinds of flutes. But I have another special surprise for you today. I have the alto flute, which I will show you. I will play Amazing Grace on it. But before I do, I'm gonna show you some of the differences between the alto flute and the regular flute. If I hold them up, you can see that the alto flute is not only longer, it's quite a bit longer. I'll move closer and you can see that it's also wider. See that? Pretty cool, huh? I'm also going to turn so you can see the size of the keys. The keys on the alto flute are also much bigger. And you'll see that there are no open holes. The alto flute, actually the keys are so big that you can't reach them without help. So this is what I mean. I'll put my regular flute down. On the alto flute, these three small circles control all of those big keys. Same thing on the left hand, these small circles up here control all of these big keys because there is no way that I could reach my fingers down to control that one. So that's a fun fact about the alto flute is that the small circles control the big keys. This particular flute is actually not solid silver. It's silver plated. When I was a full-time orchestral or symphonic musician, I was required to have an alto flute because a lot of symphony music features the alto flute. Um, and again, I tried several different kinds and the solid silver alto flutes were very heavy. And I tried to picture myself being able to sit through a two hour rehearsal like this and I thought, I don't think I can do that. So this is silver plated. And for me, this was the best option. Also silver plated is less expensive than solid silver and that was definitely a factor. So we know that the alto flute is longer than the regular flute and it's wider and the keys are bigger. What do we think is going to be true of the sound? Let's think, do you think the sound of the alto flute is going to be lower or higher? Hmm, think about the biggest instrument you know. I think of the tuba or the string bass, and those are very big instruments and they are also very low. So the alto flute is lower overall. I'm going to give you a demonstration right now of what Amazing Grace sounds like on alto flute. I think it's really beautiful on this instrument.
Now I added a couple of flourishes or little decorations that I won't make you do on um, our version of Amazing Grace. But I wanted to give you a taste of what that sounds like on alto flute. I'm now gonna grab my regular flute. By the way, the proper name of regular flute is called the C flute. And I'll show you what the same, I'm gonna play the exact same notes on flute and you'll see it's a little bit higher. <laughs> exactly the same as they were on alto flute, but you noticed it was a little bit higher. It's a fourth higher. The difference between piccolo and flute is a whole octave, but alto flute is just a little bit lower than the C flute. So here we are with learning Amazing Grace. You will notice that there are more lines than we are used to. This is what's called a flute and piano score. So if you're looking for a piece of music on flutetunes.com or anywhere else, if you see it set up like this, where there are three lines bracketed together, the top line where I have put the red arrow is the flute part. The bottom part is designed for a piano to play those notes with you. If you happen to have someone near you who plays the piano, that's what that's for. So you may find some music in your research that looks like this, or you might find some that just looks like a single flute line. So for right now, we are just going to look at the top line of the top set. And we're going to look at from here to here. Now, Amazing Grace only has five notes. G, C, D, E, and A. See if you can find all five notes. So let's try speaking and fingering the first phrase. First we'll speak it, and then we might try singing it the second time. And one, two, G, C, E, C, E, D, C, A, G, G, C, E, C, E, D, G. Good, notice we have a fermata. That means hold it a little bit longer. It's going to be a little longer than two beats. This time we will try fingering and singing the first line. I have held off on doing this until this point because as a beginner, you've got enough to think about. You're learning notes, you're learning, learning rhythms, you're learning how to blow properly, you're learning, learning your fingerings, you're thinking about so many things. I did not wanna add having to sing the right notes as another task to do at the same time as all of those other things. But right now, we will try to sing the first line. Just to clarify, we will be singing the letter names, not the actual words of the song. And one, two, G, C, E, C, E, D, C, A, G, G, C, E, C, E, D, G, job. All right, let's play the first line. I will say one, two, and take a breath while I'm counting. Whole first line stopping on that G. And one, two. <laughs> going to end up holding that fermata about five beats. Good job. We will now start at the pickup 
to the second line. That's right here. This note doesn't really belong to this line. The phrase, the musical idea, ends on the high G. The E is the start of the new musical idea. A couple things. We have the dotted quarter eighth note rhythm. Just as a refresher, that means we tap our foot twice on the G, or we think one, two, and then we put the next note when our foot is up or in between the beats. So that whole measure, let me write in the end, is one, two, and three, and. If we add the one, it sounds like one, two, and three, and one. If we add the pickup, it sounds like three, one, two, and three, and one. If you don't fully understand this way of counting yet, it's okay. Fortunately, most of us know the song by ear, and you can also rely on your ear, but now you also know the proper way to count it. So here we go. We're gonna to try to start at the pickup and speak and finger through the end. We will not do the optional repeat. You're welcome to do that on your own, however. So I'll say one, two, and then let's start here. Speaking and fingering. One, two, E, G, E, G, E, C, G, A, C, C, A, G, G, C, E, C, E, D, C. Great. We will now try to sing and finger, just like we did before. Now remember, if you don't feel ready for singing, that's okay. We're gonna start in the same place, singing and fingering the notes. One, two, E, G, E, G, E, C, G, A, C, C, A, G, G, C, E, C, E, D, C. Good job. Let's play the second line, starting with the pickup to the second line, which is right here. I will just say one, two, and again, take a breath while I'm counting. We're starting right here. Fingers on E. Here we go, big breath. One, two. job. And here we go. We're going to try to play the whole thing. I have added a few breath marks so that you can see where some good places to take breaths are. Generally, anytime you've got a long note, you can breathe right afterwards. I missed one. You can breathe here. So even there are some half notes where I did not put a breath mark, but you can breathe there. Um, but as a general rule, as I said, any long note is okay to take a breath after, afterwards. I'm gonna put on my metronome. Get your fingers ready on G. We're going to play the whole song. And I'm gonna try 58 today with my metronome. 5 eight. And take a nice big breath. Get some oxygen running through your body. And don't forget, when I'm counting and I'm saying one, two, you should be breathing while I'm counting. Here we go. One, two.
great job. Let's do it one more time. Now you have noticed probably that we have some slurs. If you are able to do those, please do them. But if you don't feel ready at this point and you want to just play the notes and add in the slurs later, that is absolutely fine. Don't forget, we start the song on a low G, but over here we have a high G. So the difference is that you need to blow much harder on this note than you do on this note. So let's try it. Whole song one more time. Take another deep breath. <sighs> You're doing great. Count, sorry, breathe while I'm counting. I'll say one, two, and you should be breathing during that time. One, two. Now you'll notice I did play the slurs when I played Amazing Grace. But again, you've got a lot to think about. You've got to think about tonguing, moving your fingers, playing the right notes, breathing. You've got a whole lot of other things to think about. So if you're not ready to add the slurs at this point, again, it's okay. Maybe try to add them in a couple days. I hope you enjoyed working on Amazing Grace today. Thanks for your hard work and I will see you next time. Have a great day.